I've got more layering stencils with hot foil and die cutting today that is mwah, gorgeous. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm going to be using some gorgeous products from Pink Fresh Studio to create a lovely card where I might be bending the rules of nature a little bit, but you know what? It's card making. We can do that. I love how this project turned out and even though as par for the course, I always have a little bit of confusion when it comes to foiling. One of these days I'm actually going to nail the foiling right out of the gate, but this is not that day. Still, stick around to see that card project Project that turned out pretty well all the same. It's coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be using today and I'm very excited to have again a hot foil plate, coordinating stencil for adding color, the dies, and then I'm going to use a greeting from this coordinating stamp set. But I don't think I'm going to stamp the detail here because I'm going to use the foil. So these are the basics. I am going to use a little bit of hot foil from this pack. I'm going to use this matte gold. And I've got some hammer mill cardstock that I have been having pretty good results with for hot foiling. So we are actually going to hot foil first and let's get set up to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is make sure to have a piece of foil that is cut large enough here. And I'm not really worried about overfoiling because this has a die, right? So I'm just gonna lay it here for a second. Actually, this is where my new little craft mat can become helpful here because, check it out, go like that. You can kinda go like that and maybe I can just hold that with a magnet so I can actually cut. Oh, well, I don't know. There we go. Now, I can trim it down a little, and I probably, oh, it's very shiny. I probably will. Now, let's bring this over here and see. You know, I bet I could even cut with a, oh, I wonder if I could cut on here with a, what is it called? An X-Acto knife, you know what I mean? Because I, well, I guess I could. Okay, pretty side to pretty side. Let me think here though. My brain is totally frying out here. Ooh, I got an idea. I have Tim Holtz uh, media grip mat. Someone told me I could do this. So let's, uh, let's bring in the machine. I have an idea. Will this work? What am I thinking? I am thinking that you go like that. Okay, so this will hold the foil, and then we can go like that. And I can <laughs> kind of out of the picture here. Let's let's get let's get you all over here a little bit. There we go. Now I can actually cut around this a little bit. So we got pretty side to pretty side. That part I understand. Um, and now I'm just gonna, you know what? <laughs> I swear, me and foil. It's a three ring circus, but here we go. We're gonna go like this. I prefer these big scissors sometimes for this because I feel like just getting long clean cuts is good. Wait, how do I do this? Okay, let me think. Grip mat, pretty side to pretty side, right? Like, oh my gosh. I don't know now. You're gonna have to let me know in the comments, but we're gonna pop that on. We're going to heat it up. We're going to put this on here like this, right? Because I think that'll work. Of course it will. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Please help me. Help me. Okay, I think I have. I know there's a way to do this and I'm not doing it correctly. And now I feel like the foil is going to overfoil onto my plate. So let's. Oh my God. One of these days, I'm going to know what I'm doing. It's just, it doesn't happen to be today. Okay. Come on, just go. Go like that. See, I'm sure there's a way that this works into its favor. Does it go like? <laughs> okay, pause. Trying this again. This is this is not my skill set. And I think when this, and I'm sure there's some of you watching, they're like, Kathy, you, you're making mountains out of molehills, but here's what we're gonna do. Pretty side to pretty side, right? I'm gonna tape this sucker into place. And let's just cut right along here on the edge. I'm so confused. Here's what we're gonna do. We taped the pretty side. Oh, I did it backwards. Okay. You know, it's not my natural habitat. Can we just say that? It's just not. Okay, so let's 
Just take that little bit out. Okay, now place it on the platform and hit that timer and hit the time. I think I, uh, turn you on. So let's go like this. Cause you know what? It might actually end up working. We don't know. Okay, now, oh, there we go. Now put this on and go timer. I'm just not sure why foiling setup is so confusing for me. I think part of it is math and I think this is gonna turn out just fine. But I hope, hope you enjoyed that. I, I, I feel like I make it seem very intimidating and not easy at all. Okay, so as this is heating up, let's get our spellbinders ready. I'm gonna open that, open that, okay, okay. Get that in place and let us transfer the foil to our piece. Oh, now I don't, I don't know if this is gonna work. It might, it should, but we'll see. I'm just looking forward to the ink blending. I swear the foiling is just like a mental, well, it's like a mental block for me. All right, let's take this off. Let's take this off. Let's pick this up. Okay, and then I will pick up my little guy and put that away. So I feel like this did work. Let's take a look. Well, look at that. All that for nothing, right? Look at that shine. Okay, now we'll start ink blending. One of the things I love about Pink Fresh products is on the back, it'll show you what it's supposed to look like so you can plan how it's going to look. Now, I want to do an all pink leaf. I know it's not really in nature, but here's the beauty, beautiful thing about card making. We create our own reality. So I'm going to start with the first stencil and I'm trying to see, is there a number on here? Yes, there is stencil one. And I'm going to get set up here with the lightest color that I have, which is ballet slippers. Okay, that's gonna go on first. So let's set this here. Now I have my, uh, well, you know what? Let's just tape this into place. We'll tape our actual piece here so that doesn't move. I don't wanna have magnets on this because we're just gonna, we're gonna line up the stencil and it'll be just fine. So then I can make sure it's reading correctly. So it says stencil one. And then we just make sure we get it lined up, knowing that we are gonna be die cutting this. I think that looks good. All right, I'm gonna bring in these magnets to hold the stencil. And let me grab a brush. I'm just going to clean this off with my paper towel. This is really just what I do with my brushes. I'm not too concerned, you know, about having them be perfectly clean. I don't wash them very often. But now we'll go ahead and we'll bring this color in. It's gonna be very pale. And we'll just blend. Oh, it is very pretty. It's got more color than I, oh, I always expect it to be paler. It's a really nice pink. Okay, coming in here. And here's the thing about card making and crafting. You really can create your own reality. If you want all pink leaves, you know? You don't have to have green in there. You don't have to follow the, the rules of nature. <laughs> At least I don't think you do. Yeah, no, you don't. You don't, you're good. Because I just want this to be a really pretty fun centerpiece of this card. And that's why I'm doing it. Take this off and pick this up. Now, isn't that pretty? I'm going to move on to the second stencil and magnet like that. And I'm gonna move into the next color. Also, I had someone sent me some extra magnets here and you can totally order extras. I don't know where she got them, but uh, yeah, they're kind of cool. All right, we're gonna move on to bubble gum. And I'm just gonna use, again, the same uh, brush because we're going a little darker. And we're just gonna add in a little detail here, like that. And I am going with kind of a light hand. I'm not, you know, throwing this down really hard. 
just a little. And switching directions on the stencil too when you're blending helps. All right, get that ink in there. There we go. Actually, now I'm tempted to bring an orange in, and I might. Just kind of had a change of heart. I love pink and orange together. All right, there we go. And actually, just to make this easier, uh, I'm just going to put this right here and kind of hinge it so I know that angle. <gasps> Pretty. Okay, hinge it down. Good. So what if I did bring in... No, you know what? Here's where we're going to go with our, with our next tone down. Let's just go with passion fruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll just stay with the pinks. We'll stay with the pinks. But I think passion fruit does have a bit of a ready orange tone to it. It's kind of pretty. Okay, bringing these in. And again, this is funky, you know, leaves don't really look like this in nature. And guess what? We're okay with that. We're okay with that because it's going to be cool. All right. Beautiful. Especially once it dries back, I think it's going to be pretty cool. All right. And the final piece is going to be, see, this is where I wonder about the orange or the raspberry bliss, but here's the reality. I want to keep it all in these colors. And also I think raspberry bliss is the most gorgeous color. I actually just did a video, which I'll be sure to link for you. And it's about the Pantone color of the year. And I feel that raspberry bliss is about the closest match to a color called Viva Magenta. So we're going all in. We're going all in with the pinks. This is going to be very bold. So let's do it. And again, same brush for the pinks. All right. And let me just double check that. I feel like I was a little off just at the top. There we go. Okay. And blend. And this color is a firecracker of beauty. So pretty. But I could, you know, I can kind of soften it a little as I go. It doesn't have to be so bold. Maybe a little bolder in the center, but you know what? It's going to dry beautifully. And also, I don't know if you've noticed this, but the foil kind of acts like a emboss resist, right? It just sort of resists the color. And that is it. Let's reveal our final piece and see how it looks. Now that is a gorgeous, gorgeous leaf. All right, let me get this cleaned up and we'll get ready to die cut. I'm just going to run my little towel over it, but the foil really does resist. So this is going to be just fine. And now I will line this up so we can cut it out. I've got my Spellbinders machine and the I've got this universal plate system. And we're going to just pop this on here. Looks pretty lined up. And put the plate on top and run it through. There we go. Listen to that good cracking. Oh, shop that right out. Okay. The cut is done. Let's take a look. Ooh, that's beautiful. Come on now, release. Got a little bit of tape there. There we go. And look at that beautiful, shiny, wonderful piece for my card. I think that's beautiful. And actually, I think I'm going to cut out a few more of these to glue them together to build it up for a little dimension. Let me cut a few more out and we'll glue those together. I've got a couple layers here and what I'm going to do is put my pretty layer in here. Make sure I do this the right way, right? Is that right? Yes. I'm going to add some spray glue to the back of these and then I'm going to go ahead and stack them up. So let me do this off camera. Bring it in one layer here. Actually, you know what? I bet it's easier just to focus on the tip like that. And honestly, I've gotten better at stacking. It just takes a little practice. Don't stress if you're not good at it at first. And, and remember, 
it is just paper, right? It's just a nice way to add dimension. Line this up. I don't even think I need the tweezers because of the stem. A little shaky there. Pop it down. And there we go. That just makes this a little more substantial, right? And I think that is going to be very nice for our card. So let's move on. I think it could be nice to do my greeting, which I want to do. Let's see here. There's always a reason to celebrate. And I think it would be fun to do it in a pink that perhaps matched what I have done. These are, oh, look at that, passionate pink would be a great match. These are my little swatch rings. I have them for every paper line that I use. Um, let me actually grab my Simon Says stamp because I, ooh, see, I like, boy, dull pink or passionate pink. I think I'm gonna go with passionate pink today. But these are very helpful just to have, like of all the cardstock you have. Of course, I label mine and I keep them by manufacturer because I do videos and I like to be able to link and source. You may not have all these companies, but that's okay. You can still write on it which company it is, and that way you know if you run out which color and which company that you like. I have a video for this, and I will be sure to link that above in a card as well. All right, let's grab some Passionate Pink. So I'm going to pop in my little scrap here of Passionate Pink, and I'm going to get my greeting out. So I'm just gonna pop this down right here. I'm going to emboss this in gold. This is gilded from Brutus Monroe because I think that will just be a very nice accent to pick up the gold there as well. So pick this up and we're just going to prime this a little, get any coating off from manufacturing, right? Of course, these stamps get more conditioned over time as you use them, right? So don't worry if you're stamping at first and it doesn't look great out of the gate, it will eventually. I get my little pink fresh press tool here. It's so pretty, it's not pretty, it's so elegant. And let's get some anti-static powder. This powder is just to remove static and oil from the paper so that where you stamp your Versamark and the ink goes down, your embossing powder will stick there and not to the paper. So I will use my embossing ink. This is Versamark. Ink that up really well. And I think I'm only gonna stamp it down once because of the delicate greeting. So let's bring this down and get our press tool and glide over the door like that. That should be good. I mean, I can do it again if I have to, but I feel like this is going to look great. That looks great. All right. Now I will, oh, I guess I could wipe my stamp off. I do keep my little uh, Lawn Fawn stamp chamois here in this little, it's a salt cellar actually, but it's great for keeping your chamois or if you have a Gina K tidy towel, it's great for keeping them from getting super smelly. They do eventually, but you, you know. All right, let's move this aside. And I'm gonna bring out my little paper, copy paper, my little catch for my powder. And we'll sprinkle on our gilded powder. Let that sit for a minute. And tap. Oh, that's just a perfect impression. And see, it falls away beautifully. So again, if you're ever doing this and your powder seems to be sticking everywhere, try some anti-static powder. It really makes a difference. Okay. And funnel you back in. Like that. Now, when I'm using gold powder, or any powder that has more color to it, I always take my little Swiffer sheet and just wipe off my catch sheet just so I can keep using it and I don't mix any powders. And it's a great, I mean, these are super cheap and they're great for wiping powder away from your surface as well. Mm, look how pretty that is. All right, 
Let me grab the coordinated die so I can cut this out. One other thing, when you see that dusty bit of powder, once your embossing has cooled, just take e-cloths. They're wonderful for the craft room. They're wonderful for everything because well, I, they clean with water when you need to, but I also love that they're no fibers at all and they don't get on anything. These dies usually have a nice, fairly generous frame, so it's not too hard to figure out where it all goes. Tape that down and tape that down. And I'll just run that through my die cut machine really quickly and then we can start to assemble the card. I'm going to use just a white note card for this because I think it will be very pretty. USA 2. So that means we've got a sheet of 11 inches by four and a quarter, right? And we'll go ahead and give this a nice press on that score line like that. All right, and I will tape this shut because, well, you know me. I, I like to keep it flat while I'm working on it. And even though I do, well, although, no, I think I explained this once. Uh, I The magnets will hold this in place for you. However, I take pictures of my cards after the videos and they do have to stay flat. And so the tape works. I, I tried some of the Tim Holtz Media Grip Map for that. It doesn't really work the way you would think it does, but you know, it is nice for this. This will hold while you're trying to figure out, you know, where you're working if you're on a slick surface. So, oh, I just think this is so pretty. So I could go this way. I do, I kind of do like that. And then we're just gonna pop on, there's always room to celebrate. But I'm going to take some foam squares and sometimes I don't bother showing this, but sometimes I do. Having a craft pick or, uh, I will show you this too. The uh, Gina K Designs tool also has a pick on the end. This is kind of neat because it also can add your sequins. But what I like about this is sometimes when you have a small piece, it's, it's hard to see with your fingers, but if you put your foam squares on with a pick, once you get the hang of it, you'll, you'll, you'll never go back, right? Because it's just, it's nice because it lets you see. Now, when you get into an area that's a little thinner, for example, or my scissors, I always cut some in half and I keep them usually attached to the sheet so that again, I can pick them up with this and put them in the smallest of places. It becomes my, oh, becomes my extension of my fingers. Reminds me a little bit of the game Operation as I try to place wrenched ankle. Now, I am not sure exactly where the points of contact are going to be on this. Another thing I could have done is just cut more layers of the pink just like I did for this and glued it up. I just, it's sometimes for me, it's six of one. Do you want to waste the, uh, you know, the foam squares or do you want to use the cardstock? Actually, I think in this regard, the cardstock might've been a better plan <laughs> because I want, well, actually now, as I look over here, I kind of want this to be here. So I may need to double up on the celebrate end. All right. And this is something you have to do sometimes. You have to double up your foam to match the rest of the dimension. So let's see here. I think that will work. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I love it. Okay. Now let's get out our liquid glue. Just add Gina K Connect glue to the back of this piece. And it's so easy to just, well, I'll put a few dollops down here to hold the stem just come up like that and just go around with the glue. That's going to hold this in place and I will pick this up where there is no glue. Actually, let's try doing this from the side because I think sometimes it's easier to see and envision, right? So we're gonna pop that so it's about the same from side to side and top to bottom. Oh, it's so pretty on this surface. Let's make sure that's out of the way so I like the way that looks. 
Yeah, I think that's pretty. Woo, this is fancy. Where's my brick? Let's take the backers off of our foam squares. And again, I am going to hold this from about that standpoint. I'm going to use, again, a little dollop of the liquid glue. So let's just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. That just gives me a little wiggle room on each square before pressing it down into place. But I wanna make sure that I do have this supported and I feel like that is the location right there. Isn't that pretty? And press. Oh my goodness. I definitely need sequins, so let me grab. I'm gonna use some of the, this calls for confetti gold. Let me open this up. I love these pen blades because you can also use them to open these little bead containers from Elizabeth Ward. And uh, yeah, they're very nice for that. And now here comes the fun with the Gina tool is that you can use this, of course, to pick up sequins and figure out what you are going to do. And I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do here. I, well, that's, that's not wanting to come off. Hold on here, go like that. Take a mid-sized one there. Ooh, that's pretty. I'll probably do the same thing over, over here, right, with that and a small one. Like that. And maybe I'll just do one more up top. Here's what I don't know. Do I want it on that side? Yeah, because it's kind of it's kind of given me that vibe. Layered stencils are so fun. I don't like that one. Let's get a different one, little weird guy. Okay, <gasps> isn't that fun? I don't think, although if I have this over here, let's just look, sometimes you have to look. Mm, you know what, that's better. It's better because we're getting more of a triangular connection, so we are gonna go that way, I didn't think so. And we like threes, right, because three is a magic number. Three creates this little connecting point all the way around. Plus we have the repetition of the leaf gold. So this is, well, this is all kinds of repetition happening. Let's add our sequins. A little liquid glue here and boop. Boop, like that. Oh, almost sent that flying. I love how it's just got a natural place to be nestled in there. Boop, so nice. This leaf, I'm so glad I went with pinks. Boop. Because it becomes, hold on here, boop, more of a graphic element, if that makes sense, right? To just, you know, what what is your favorite color? Just work in tones right, that you have for that, and then you can create this card that really feels more like, a, more like a graphic element and less like a leaf, if that makes sense. But that's my finished card project. Look at the shine on that. Oh my gosh, layered stencils plus foiling. I know it takes me a while to get going, but this is why I keep coming back to using my hot foil machine because I am loving the results almost every time. You can find links to all the supplies I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my channel, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. To see a few more hot foil projects, check out the two thumbnails I have linked for you below and I'll see you in those videos.